slowly adapting. A lot of the projects and programs I have built on the old LEGO EV3 Mindstorm software on LabVIEW to their new platform, um, the, the Scratch-based programming. And so what I want to do here is start with a series of ways to build the code for SumoBot. This is our most popular summer camp. We use it in schools. I see tons of teachers and other places using it in after school programs. And so I want to start with just creating a series of how these programs can work. And so most of this is pretty straightforward. Um, you can look at the old stuff to go through. I'm going to show you a picture of my robot right here. And looking at the robot, you can see there that obviously I have um, a couple touch sensors and things like that. So you're going to maybe have to adapt your code a little bit with the sensor, the thing that you're using. But I will be creating a series of these SumoBot codes for you to think about. So let's dive into the code. Um, what I want my SumoBot to do is to obviously avoid falling off the SumoBot arena. And I also want it to attack when another robot is in its presence and to be able to turn around when it senses the edge. So when we go here, we're we're actually going to create four of these blocks here. I'm just right clicking and duplicating. You could also pull it from over here in the panel. Um, I can go here to events and it's also in this block as well. But I just like to right click, boom, it's right there for me to duplicate as I need. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna set up the movement patterns of the robot and basically have three actions. And I, I learned this phrase from a, another EV3 user. Um, and I just like the way this flows because I can continue to add actions as I build more complex robots as we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we get our, our movement motors. We need to identify where they are. And so in this case here, um, it defaults to B and C. My particular robot, my motors are on A and B. So I'm just going to adjust these so that all my coding understands that my motor movements are in ports A and B. You might have B, C, and D, whatever you choose is fine. Uh, just make sure that they all line up accordingly or your robot's gonna move a little wonky. Then we're gonna drop down here to control and we're just going to um, wait our three seconds we like to have a pause when we battle in our arena so that when the program starts, it, it pauses three seconds and then it rocks and rolls. So we've got that here and then we're going to go through and we're going to set some actions. And so action is a variable. So I'm going to drop down here to the variables and I'm going to make one and I'm going to call it action. You can call it whatever you want. I just really like this one. Actually, I'll probably be using this for all future programs because it just makes a lot of sense to me. So. What we can do here then is we're going to set the action and we're just going to set it to number one um, for now. And so what I'm going to do is start to figure out what's going to happen with each of these actions. So we're going to drop over here to our controls now at this point and we're going to put in a forever block right in here. And we're going to then jump up here to our display and we're just going to display it. We're going to write it so that way you can troubleshoot to see what's going on with your robot. In case things aren't working, you can see and gather some info. So I'm dragging this right block here and we're going to replace this EV3 with our variable. It's just going to display whatever the action number is, one, two, or three. All right, and I'm just going to make it large. I'm going to make it large and black. You can make it bold. Whatever you want to do it is completely up to you. Then we're gonna drop back over here. We're gonna throw in some if blocks in here. So we're gonna go right here and we're gonna build out our first step. So if, okay, we gotta get our operator here and we're gonna go for the equal one. If our action, our variable here, if the action equals one, what do we want it to do? In this case, cause we're talking sumo bots, we just wanna move forward and you can make this whatever pace you want for now what I like to test we're gonna keep the speed low um, but you know once I get going I might crank up a little bit once I got it dialed in so we're just if it's variable is set to one our action is set to one we're gonna go straight okay and I'm just gonna make it 35% there we go now let's just duplicate this actually I'm just gonna bring this out I'm gonna duplicate this bad boy I'm gonna do it one more time here. 
Okay, so now if our action equals two, all right, what do we want to do here? Um, so let's identify this. We want to be able to go straight. Our other action is going to be to go backwards and get out of the way. So if our robot senses the edge of the arena, we need to get out of the way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to get rid of this block because we don't need it. We're going to set our movement to 50%. And we're going to then move for a certain amount of rotation. So we're going to move. Uh, let's see. Let's move for. There you go. Here, let's try. It. Let's use this one. Move for one rotation. We're going to add the action block in here. So we're gonna move. Oh, I lied. I lied. We're not. We're not adding the action block. Sorry. Brain fart. All right. We're gonna pick a random in this bad boy, and we're gonna make this a random from negative 100 to 100 for one rotation. All right. Now a couple things here that I could do is I can make sure that I actually do go backwards even more. And so I'm just going to put this block in here just so you have it. Just You're going to have to play around with your robot because every robot's a little bit different. But I could add this in here, and I could just program and go backwards for one rotation, then this random number generator, and then away we go. And then what we can do here then is we want to get this thing set back to um, 1 so that it's going straight again so it can make another read. So then we're just going to set the action to 1 in this if block. Okay? So let me explain what we just did here. All right, so we've got if action is one, we're just going straight. It's going straight, gone. If it senses, and we'll talk about the sensor here in a minute, the edge, all right, we're going to move the movement speed to 50%. I have it going backwards from one rotation. It is going to move one rotation somewhere between a negative 100 and 100. So it's going to shift. It's going to change the direction. And then it's going to set the action to one. So in this case, it's going to kick back up to this if block, right? It's going to pop back up to this forever, to this if block, and it's going to start going straight again. It's going to keep making those reads. All right. Finally, if our action is three, so I want to have an attack mode for my robot. That's why I have the touch sensors on mine. So when those sensors are pressed, my robot knows it's time to giddy up and take care of business. So what we're going to do here then is we're going to go back to this movement block, and we're going to move straight. And I want to go full power. So I need to find the one where I can start moving. Here it is. Start moving straight. And I'm going at 100%. So if my sensor is triggered, I know that it's time to get after it. And I'm just going to play a sound. You can pick sounds. Maybe you want to ban sounds completely from your classroom. But I'm going to go down here to the movements. And we're just going to do this, the speed up sound. Uh, just because it makes sense of what we're doing. We're speeding up. We're going full power. We're getting right after it. Okay? So we've got three different things moving. So I'm just going to add a comment here just so you have this, so you can understand what we got going on. So our action block will do three things. One equals to go forward. Two equals the reverse and avoid the edge and three is going to equal we're pushing we're going to push for victory that's what we're going after right there okay so now let's get the sensors triggered so that we know what's going to happen uh, when these things go so we have to make our robot be able to be smart enough to make decisions so when the program block here we're going to go back up to our control here and we're going to throw in a forever loop all right so when the program starts and we're going to put another if block another we got another forever loop with some if then statements so if in this case this is going to be my light sensor so this is the sensor that's detecting the arenas that we use for our camps it's black on the inside with a white trim um, a lot of times you see the opposite 
white arena with black trim. So you might do adjust your 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 angles here, whether you want it greater than or less than. But for me, I want a light sensor here, and I want reflected light. So I'm looking for reflected light. Here we go. If reflected light, and I am using port three, so that's good, is less than 50. So I need to switch this because, like I said, we have a black arena with a white trim. So if the light reflection is greater than 50%, I'm going to go to this variable here, and I'm setting action to 1. So if I'm anywhere in the arena where it's black, that's where I want to be, I'm setting action to 1. So this is triggering here, and this is going to tell my robot to go straight at 35%. Pretty straightforward. Then down here, what I want to do is because I have two touch sensors on my robot. So I want to put in here these sensors to be triggered. So I'm going to look down here and I'm going to duplicate this block section here. And then I'm going to do the same thing again over here. All right. But now I want to put in the touch. So if one is pressed, because I have my sensors in ports one and two for my particular robot. And I want to make this two. We're going to set the action to three for both of these. Okay. So now if either one of my touch sensors are pressed, it's going to kick in over here to three, and we know that the robot's in our sights. We're going to speed up. We're going to get after it. All right, now I don't want my robot to go straight forever because then if I fall off, you know, I'm not victorious either. So I'm going to put in a wait block after this. And so I'm going to wait. It's going to do this for two seconds. It's going to go straight, set an action block straight for two seconds. All right, and then... It's just going to set that block back to one and make another decision here. So it's going to go right here, and it's just going to default to get in and out of that um, comp that loop block here that we've got. All right, now this set to one might be a little unnecessary, but at least you can see what's going on here. The button is pressed. It's going to go full throttle 100%. It's going to play this music thing. It's going to do that for two seconds. It's kicking me back to a slow speed, and then it's going to make another read. And if these triggers are, are still triggered, it's going to automatically convert, and it's going to kick in the high gear again. So it's it, it'll constantly do that while we go through this. All right? So as we go, go through these things here, the only other thing I see that I have to fix is, I don't know if you caught it earlier, is I need to change this right here, don't I? I need to make this action too. So at my default, set action to 1, set action to 1, set action 1 is going straight at 35% speed. Okay, that's all this one right here. If the light, okay, is greater than 50, so this is now my robot's creeping up on the edge of the arena, and it's starting to see white, it's going to kick in number 2, which is going to take me here to this section. All right, it's going to move my robot backward. It's going to spin it around wherever random place it's going to be, and it's going to move it back to one, which is going to have it go straight. And then if either of my touch sensors are pressed, we're going into fight mode, pushing hard, 100%, see what's going. So there it is. Here's my uh, Sumo Bot program. I'm going to be creating more of these, but in the meantime, let me know what you think, what questions you have. And obviously, you're going to have to make some adjustments depending on your robot. So some of you might be using ultrasonic. So if you don't have touch sensors on there, this might be ultrasonic where you're waiting for a robot to get close to detect of, of a material object, say under 10 centimeters, you could do the exact same thing. So just, just adjust it with your sensors and we'll go from there. All right, my friends, as always, stay awesome.